Hello, welcome to PeopleSoft channel. My name is Siva Khoya. Today's topic is page field configurator. What it is, how we can leverage it to reduce page customizations. What are the recent enhancements that went in page field configurator? I'm also going to show you how to migrate our page field configurations from one environment to another environment. As you can see, there is a lot of ground to cover. Without any delay, let's get started. Traditionally, we use App Designer to make changes to a PeopleSoft page for common requests like if business wants to see a different label for a specific page field, we update it using App Designer. Likewise, hiding a specific page field or disabling entry on a page field and so on and so forth. When we touch a delivered page, it is a customization, which means for every upgrade, development effort is involved to take care of these changes in the form of retrofits. Oracle provided page field configurator to eliminate this development effort. All these common scenarios that I listed here can be performed using page field configurator. And the best part is all these custom changes are tracked independently without touching delivered objects. Page field configurator was introduced in PeopleTools 8.55 and is evolving since then. These are some of the advanced features that we can implement using page field configurator. Data masking. For example, if you want to mask last four digits of a bank account number on a specific page, we can implement using page field configurator. When page field configurator was introduced, we can only use level zero fields as a criteria for the configuration of page field configurator. Now they have expanded the list to level one fields. I will explain more about this criteria when I show you the demo. Page field configurator can now control the display conditionally after user updates a field value. For example, we can configure such a way that if user changes the status of a field from active to inactive, we can hide certain fields. And lastly, if we disable a page field entry, through page field configurator, we can set that value to blank using page field configurator itself. Page field configurator is available if your PeopleSoft application is at least on PeopleTools 8.55 as well as application levels as shown here. As I discussed before, these are the main advantages of using page field configurator. All right, it's time for a demo. Let's get our hands dirty and implement what we have learned so far. Let's assume these are the six changes that business need on a defined product component. Change number one, only when the product is of type product kit, catalog number should be hidden. In all other cases, it should be visible. Change number two, we have to change the label of model number to part number. Change number three, we have to disable user to change the status from active to inactive. Change number four, where performed field should be made required. Change number five, we have to make product custom info page two as display only. And the final change is we have to hide product custom info page three. I will go ahead and perform these changes one by one using page field configurator. I will log into my PeopleSoft application. First of all, I want to ensure I have an appropriate role to perform these changes. In order to do that, I will navigate to People Tools, Security, User Profiles, User Profiles. I'll search with my user ID. I'll navigate to Roles and I will add the role EOCC Administrator, Page Configurator Admin role. I will save it. Now I am all set to perform our changes. Before I start with the changes, I want to know the component name so that I can make the changes. Our component is product component. I will navigate to products, identify product details, define product and attributes. And here on my URL, I have the component name. I will go ahead and copy the component name. And now I will navigate to page field configurator. In order to access page field configurator, I will navigate to enterprise components, page and field configuration, page field configurator. I will click on add a new value. I will paste 
for component name i want to apply globally i will select the configuration type as standard i will click on add button i will give some description before i go ahead and make changes to our page fields i want to stress one important thing to you first of all we have to divide our changes based on criteria for example for business unit x user might need one set of changes and for business unit y you might have another set of changes you define that criteria here by clicking on this link when you define criteria peoplesoft made available level 0 and level 1 fields to you so that you can select that page field and insert that criteria when you have multiple set of changes based on different criteria we will have multiple sequence numbers for sequence number 1 you will define the first criteria and make the changes and you will add the next sequence number provide the next set of criteria and make the changes accordingly peoplesoft will evaluate each sequence number it will start with sequence number 1 it will check if criteria 1 is met make the changes and it will go to the second one only when apply additively checkbox is selected if you do not select it once it satisfied the first criteria make the changes it will not consider the second one if this checkbox is not selected in addition to that we can also associate this specific criteria to a specific set of user list based on roles or user ids enough of talking let's start making our changes i'm looking at our requirements i see five of our changes doesn't require any criteria let's start with those changes let's start by selecting all the page fields that needs changes in order to do that i will select fields here i can select the page field source from which page i want to pull my fields i can also select secondary page in our case all our page fields lie on product definition page so i will select this page i will click on search button now i will click on view all and let's select all the page fields that needs changes model number where performed status i'll go ahead and click ok let's make our first change to our label i will update the label from model number to part number in order to do that i will select modify label now i have an option to update the label let's move to the second change we have to disable user from changing the status value from active to inactive or inactive to active i can do that by just selecting disable entry flag when i disable the user entry on this field you can set it to blank if i select this flag when user saves the page a blank value will be stored for status i don't want to do that in my case so i'm not selecting this checkbox and lastly we want to make where performed a required field so i will select this required field flag we have two more changes to perform let's quickly do those changes as part of fourth change we have to make product gen info to page as display only so i will select that page and check the flag display only we want this page visible to the end user so i will say yes to visible now let's move on to the final change as part of final change we have to make this page prod gen info 3 invisible so let's keep the default value which hides by default since our changes should be applied in all scenarios i will select apply additively now let's perform the second set of changes that is dependent on a criteria in order to do that i will click on plus button and remember the criteria the product kit flag should be s so i will go ahead and define our criteria i will click on define criteria and i will select the field and the page field is on on primary product definition page and let's select product kit flag so where is product kit here it is i will select this field i will click ok and i want it to be equal to y product kit should be y in that case i want to hide catalog number field so i will select fields and i will look for catalog number which is on product definition page and this is our catalog number field i will click ok as per the change request we have to hide catalog number for a product kit so i will say hide field when product kit is equal to y 
That's it guys, we have completed all our five changes and don't forget to select this flag, apply additively. If you do not select this flag, if the first criteria is met, in our case there is no criteria, unless you select this flag, this criteria will not be evaluated. We can also take our configuration a step further by associating our page field configuration to a specific role or user ID. I am not going to cover this in this demo. And now let's go ahead and validate our configuration. In order to do that, I will click on validate configuration. The validation is completed and no errors were found. Definitely this validation option comes handy if underlying page or component gets corrupted. I definitely recommend this option, especially after we migrate our changes to other people's software environments. We can always try this in our target environment and ensure all our page field configuration is migrated. By the way, we are not done yet. We have one last step pending. Until we do that, our changes will not be reflected on our target component. In order to do that, I will navigate to map to portal registry. If this particular component is available in different navigations, all those navigations will be listed here and we can select for which navigation our configuration should be effective. Since we have only one navigation, I will select our navigation and I will click on apply configuration. And now as you can see the confirmation message saying that all our page field configurator changes are applied on target component. Now let's quickly test our changes. I will search for an existing product. I'll search for a product. As you can see the status field is disabled now. Model number label is changed to part number and where performed field is a required field. Let's also verify our page changes. Product custom info page is display only and product custom info three pages invisible. Now let me quickly show you the field change action generated by our page field configuration. In order to do that, let's add a new product kit. I'll click on add, click add. See this, as soon as I select this product kit, catalog number will be invisible. As you can see, our catalog number disappeared and that is done by our page field configuration. This is one of the newest enhancements of page field configurator. That's it guys. This concludes my quick overview of page field configurator to you. Now I'll quickly show you what all objects needs to be included as part of data migration workbench project to migrate your page field configuration from one people's software environment to another. Let's take a look. Let's create a data migration workbench project to migrate the changes that we have done so far. In order to do that, I will navigate to People Tools, Lifecycle Tools, Migrate Data, Data Migration Workbench. Let's add a new value, give an ID for our project. I'll click Add. First, we have to select Dataset. PeopleSoft delivered a dataset to migrate page field configuration changes. The dataset name is EOCC Configuration. After you tab out of it, we need to provide the component name on which we did the changes. I will search, I will select, insert and return. I will click OK. I will return. We have a few more items that we need to migrate. If we take a look at our page field configuration, PeopleSoft behind the scenes in order to inject this configuration, it used event mapping. So you can find the event mapping that PeopleSoft created by clicking review and edit mapping. And if you click on that, you can see these are the object PeopleSoft created on the fly to make the configuration work. We have to migrate all these objects in order for our configuration to work on our target PeopleSoft environment. In order to migrate these objects, we have to select a few more data sets. The very first one is RCF underscore service underscore configurations mainly used to migrate event mapping configuration. I will search for it. In order to export our changes, we have to provide the portal object name. In order to fetch our portal object name, I will navigate this path through portal registry. Let me show you. I will navigate to people tools, portal, structure and content. This is where I will navigate this path. Products, I will select products, identify product details, click edit. 
and this is our portal object name let me copy this because this is our target component on which we applied our configuration i will head back to our data migration workbench i will paste my portal object i will also select all the associated configurations by the way i need to click search here we have to select only event mapping objects as we are sure we did not touch this service id then i will click insert and return i will click ok return now i will go ahead and save our project this is it guys our project is ready to be migrated click on this button and run the process to export our project in a file format